It's the Friendly Fire Show, episode 161 for the launch date and price news day of the PS5. I'm one of your hosts, Steve from Survivor. I'm Ben from Survivor. It's been a big day, Steve. We finally got a release date and a release price and a pre-order, surprisingly, for the PlayStation 5. And pre-orders have basically come and gone for the PlayStation 5 if you want mm-hmm. it on launch day, which is the 12th of November. Um, we might as well get the other thing out of the way in case you somehow were under a rock and haven't seen the pricing. Uh, the PS5 with optical disc edition, which is not its actual name, but you get it, is uh, $749.95 Australian. And the PS5 digital edition, which is without an optical disc drive, comes to $599.95 AUD. What do you think about the price so far? So far? You know what I mean? Uh, I think... They, they've matched the Xbox Series X, which is what you would expect on the main console. Uh, the secondary one is cheaper than I thought. I thought it might be 100 bucks cheaper in Australia, um, but 600 for a flagship console, I think it makes the Xbox Series S overpriced here. I think the fact that that's only $100 cheaper, uh, it's also $100 cheaper in America, where it's like a big deal. 100 seems to be a big amount of money in the US, but here it's kind of like, eh, you just get the more expensive one. It's slightly better. Uh, so I think... I think they've beaten Xbox on both fronts. They've matched and they've gone better probably for the, the secondary one. Um, the surprising news was they announced it this morning around 8 a.m. I think they opened pre-orders. So that seemed to be a total shambles because they kind of said they were open today or tomorrow. And then all these retailers were just like, oh yeah, it's open right now. Uh, except for Amazon, at least EB and JB did that. <laughs> and, and then Target and Big W. And yeah, the they game. came later. Yeah, but like as of like this is the day that it happened on, and it's like two p.m. now. They opened about eight a.m. this morning, and it's sold out not just for launch at EB and JB, but for the whole year. It's just a general. You if you pre-order now, you'll get it in twenty-one at some point, which is crazy. That's super. I don't remember the last generation being that quick. I don't know about you, but I can't remember it being like a matter of hours. It wasn't no, even hours. It was it's minutes. insane quick. And it's and in the states. Um, well, I guess you could do it here. I'm not even, I think you could only do it in the States actually, but in the States you could register your email address and PSN ID and you were supposed to get advanced warning of when the pre-order went on sale or pre-order mm. when it went live. That obviously didn't happen. Um, in the States, they're in the same kind of boat as we are here. Like pre-orders went up and they were exhausted almost immediately. Um, I don't, well, we didn't, we definitely didn't have the register intent to pre-order thing in Australia, but we did have kind of that promise that we'd have advanced warning to prepare ourselves. Um, And if you didn't decide to pull the trigger instantly this morning, you will be playing PS4 until 2021. Yeah, I know with like EB and JB, you could register your interest with them. Uh, Now I didn't bother to do that because it seems like you're just joining a mailing list. So what was the point? Like you didn't get priority or anything. So I don't know if they got an email. I can't imagine they did because it happened so quickly. I'm not sure they would have had time to email them earlier to say, hey, this is happening like right now. So it was pointless. There was a cheeky EB email last night that kind of gave people an idea of how to make sure they were logged in and ready for whenever it happened. But it wasn't actually saying at this day and this time, you're good Mm. to go. Um, So I guess if you're looking for a next gen console, there still is the opportunity to pre-order an Xbox Series S or X on the 22nd of September, which is next week. Um, likely that's going to start at eight o'clock in the morning as well. And almost definitely. I, I don't know if it's going to be as in demand as the PS pre-orders were today, but I feel like if you want to get in on, in, in on that, you probably should be prepared <laughs> in that eight o'clock kind of window. I mean, it all depends on the stock quantity. So um, I saw Shannon from Press Start tweeted that he thought there were 75,000 consoles allocated to EB for launch uh, launch day. So that's probably pretty accurate. Um, mm-hmm. And they just went quick. So if Xbox has that many, they have more, it could look very different. But I wouldn't be waiting. I would be. I would think it's going to go on the same day as well. it will yep. be a one-day thing. And you've had an opportunity to think about it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit different. <laughs> from when it was announced. So you know and- when it's going to happen. Exactly. Xbox had a cheeky tweet this morning saying, uh, pre-orders open on the 22nd of September. We'll let you know the time ahead of time. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> so no excuses there. Well, I said before that if you didn't get a pre-order, you could, you know, you have to, you have to play your PS4 while you wait for a PS5. Um, that is a little less painful 
now that Sony's kind of gone completely back against its word and is now mm. uh, confirmed that titles like Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Horizon Forbidden West, and Sackboy A Big Adventure will be cross-generational. So the release on PS4 and PS5. Not every mm. Sony game is going to do that, but those three already are confirmed. What do you think of that? This is a bit strange because the way that Sony originally launched this, so Xbox went all in on Game Pass and we don't care where you play, uh, we just want you to subscribe. And if you want to play on Xbox One, you want to play on PC, that's fine. Sony came up, basically said, we believe in generations. I'm pretty sure that was their exact words. So you are not going to get this stuff on last gen because it's going to hold us back and Xbox holding back the industry, basically. And now they've gone and done the same thing. And they've given the same reasoning that as Xbox has pretty much saying, uh, well, we just realized we've got 100 million people buying our stuff on PS4 and we would like them to continue. Enjoy so, your money. <laughs> um, I've got the quote here. It's from Jim Ryan of Sony. He says, we have always said that we believe in generations. We believe that when you go to the trouble of creating a next gen console, that it should include the features and benefits that the previous generation does not include. And that, in our view, people should make games that can make the most of those features. Unless mm. you're Spider-Man or Horizon or Sackboy. It's, it's so, like, whatever. I'm glad that people don't have to upgrade straight away if they're not super keen on it. Um, but it's, it's pretty weird that they went that hard against the generational divide and now yeah. just kind of like, and it wasn't like super announced anywhere. It was kind of just like tucked in, like in the very middle of their PS5 well, the way, post yeah. today. Yeah, like ooh, doo, 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 doo. at the same time, they also snuck in and I'm going off our sheet. I'm going, I'm going rogue at the same time in that same kind of post in the same kind of place, Ben, that's when they just went, oh, and by the way, we're going to charge 70 US for some of our games now instead of 60 that's cool right you don't mind um and we got uh local pricing uh games like demon souls spider-man miles morales ultimate edition and destruction all-stars uh will be priced at 124 dollars and 95 cents australian Whew. and to go full circle that is why i think you the $600 all digital console is not viable in Australia, at least because uh, so retailers already have pricing up. I think they're going with kind of like 89 as opposed to the usual 69 for disc copies, still a pretty big step up, but nowhere near, you're not going straight to 125. Um, I'm not surprised this happened. I thought we were going for a generational price increase. Like every third party tries this every new generation. They normally go to 110 or 120. And then within a couple of months, they get kind of pushed back to 99 by the competition. And that's what we've been for like 20 years. Hmm. I don't recall a first party doing this. I think they've never really bothered. And I certainly don't recall one going this far up, like a 25% increase. Well, and like we were mad at 2K for going 110. 110 looks very nice now compared yeah. to 124.95. That's um, where I thought we were going, 110, but apparently not. They've just gone big. Um, they're kind of setting it as the PS5 is a premium. So that's the, that's what they're going for. But I think they've kind of shot themselves in the foot here a bit saying like, is the PS4 version of these games going to cost that much? I can't imagine there is going to be a price increase. So Spider-Man, Miles Morales, it's, there's been a lot going on this morning. So sorry if I'm not fully local. Spider-Man, Miles Morales is 50 bucks US and 70 US for the ultimate edition, which has the remastered Spider-Man. So I don't know what the mm. 50 equivalent is. Probably 100 here, I guess. Uh, so EB had it. I don't know if it was true or not, but EB had it for uh, 95. And 125. So, so yeah. That's like, and it's, it's a weird... I get that they're upping their prices, but it's a weird set of games to do it on. Like Demon's Souls is a new game. game. It's a launch game, but it's like an old game that they're bringing mm. back. Um, a remaster. It's not a full remake, is it? I can't remember. I don't um, know. And Destruction All-Stars, I couldn't tell you what that is right now. Like, is, is it a Destruction Derby game? I can't remember. No. It's, that's a game. Cool. And then Miles Morales, which has a cheaper option. But if you want the remastered version of the PS4 Spider-Man on PS5, then you're paying that price. Like, it's a weird set of games to launch this new price point with in my mind, but... I think they just had to go at the start of the generation, but it's, it's big. It's like, a, especially in the middle of a recession and a global pandemic, that's a big jump. Mm. So I think people think looking at that cheaper console thinking that's surprisingly good. Not really. It's well, yeah, you save 150 term. on the disc drive, but 
that's what it's three games out of my head yeah <laughs> after about three games you pay the extra if, like i really hate going with this but i think i don't have a choice here if game's going to be that much cheaper uh, yeah, there's no option. At least for first party games, like something like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is still listed as 99 as its RRP. So not yeah. everyone's going with this. It's a, the first party being the most expensive is pretty rare. Well, I pre-ordered a digital edition with the completely selfish mindset of hopefully I get first party codes for free most of the time. And well, you will, but we're trying to talk as for the average <laughs> consumer, Steve. But not I, just I, for I buy a lot of video games, but I buy a lot of cross platform video games. And if they're gonna be cheaper on Xbox, then I will and for obvious other reasons in you know me, but like I will buy the cheaper version on Xbox series, whatever I have. If mm. if there's a discrepancy if there's a if there's a difference in price, not a discrepancy. You know what I mean. Ta da. What's next? Uh, what's next is, well, actually to circle back slightly about the cross-gen games. So I oh, read yeah. quite an interesting thread um, from a developer, really long. It was like 40 tweets in a row and just explaining why the Xbox Series S will not hold back games. And it's pretty much saying that the fact that the CPU is almost the same, um, developers can scale a game. They're going to make it for the Series X and then they're going to scale down, which is pretty much how they make PC games now. They make it for the high end and then they bring it down to the low end. Uh, onto the point where it can run but it will be easier for consoles because they know the two benchmarks as opposed to a, a pc game where you kind of decide that's a high end and then you kind of figure out the low end once you can get it running on something lower um, but then they said the where it would hold back games is if you're still releasing games on xbox one uh, that's a totally different architecture and so it's gonna it would have to hold back a game so something like halo infinite is not going to be all it can be because it's cross-gen Whereas opposed to if it was just on Series S and Series X, it, would, it could be next-gen still. Yeah. So PlayStation is doing the same thing. For talking about, you know, we want to give it to all of our customers. Um, something like Spider-Man, it's going to play very similar to the PS4 game. You're not going to get a big advantage. It's just going to look a little better, which is not surprising. This happened last generation. We're expecting to kind of get that year of cross-gen where it's just, if you can afford it, you can have the prettier looking one, but there's nothing too amazing here. Uh, but it's just, it's not what Sony was originally talking about. They were kind of saying, you need to move with us because you're going to get something you can't get elsewhere. But maybe that's 22. I guess. I don't know. I just, I kind of just, I like the idea that you can have it on both. And with something like Spider-Man and Horizon, like we've seen how those run on a PS4 Pro, like they they run fine. Mm. But that's not including things like ray tracing and this and the other. So do they just take that out? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't fully claim to understand how de- developers do all this but yeah like it just seems like an extra hassle yeah but i guess sony's doing it not because they care about consumers look I, in my mind right now sony's doing this because they can't actually get ps5s into everybody's hands so they just still want to sell them games in my in my yeah. opinion in my take on it i think um, that's probably true they realize i've got a massive install base and they clearly have a shortage of consoles like they didn't want it to sell out in two hours this morning no. All things going well. You can at time of recording still get one. I think Amazon have them still. I think maybe the department store still have them. But by the time we post this, they probably won't with how quick they're going. Yeah, insane. Hmm. Uh, so you're going to be able to play all these PS5 games on PS4. You're also going to be able to play a bunch of PS4 games on PS5 because Sony is bringing uh, 18 PS4 games to PlayStation Plus collection, which hmm. is... Now, some people were kind of saying, is this the Game Pass equivalent? I don't think so because that's PlayStation now, right? So this is, yeah. uh, I think well, that's like, more like the. Cl- oh, I guess it used to be the cloud gaming equivalent, but then they let you download them now. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think that's what that is. I think this is more like the PlayStation Plus subscription games. At the moment, you have to go and purchase them every month. You like go buy two for free, uh, then you can play them while you're subscribed. I think this is replacing that. So instead yeah. of doing that, you'll just while you're subscribed, you just get to play whatever's in the collection. And games will probably come in and out, but it'll probably stay around that 20, maybe go up to 30 mark. I don't think we're getting like 200 plus games in here. Yeah, they were super ambiguous about it all. It's just like, you can download these now. And it's like, well, is that, is it like a launch thing? Is it an everything thing? And then Sony's come out and said like, uh, the PS Plus, P- the, I can't speak, the PS Plus collection will be an added benefit to the existing PS4 benefits that PS Plus members receive for a single subscription price. So it's like permanent, but is it, always going to be this library or are they going to rotate things mm, in they haven't out? That. yeah like we have no idea we just know what it's called and that you'll get these games in november and if you're a ps4 owner going to ps5 you probably already have them but hey that's the case for anything like this 
it's more of a benefit if you're swapping consoles yeah. Uh, or if you just didn't get a PS4 for some reason, in which case you're probably not getting a PS5 at launch. You should probably just buy a PS4 now or yeah. in about six months when they're super cheap. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, or in uh, the second or third week of November after <laughs> everyone has taken in their PS4s into EB Games and they have... Uh, yeah, well, they're doing, they're doing a very similar deal, slightly less valued compared to the Xbox One X. I think you get 300 plus your EB level bonus for a PS4 Pro. And I do not understand what are they going to do with this like 100,000 consoles are getting in the second week of November. And they're paying too much for them as far as I can tell. Like people really- Well, take advantage. <laughs> Stop it. I will. <laughs> but people really like, you know, say, don't take stuff to EB, you're getting nothing for it. And a lot of the time that's true, but they're giving you like 420 bucks for an Xbox One X. Like what? I couldn't sell it privately for any more than that. What are they well, going to do with it? Especially now. Like, I don't know if I'm even allowed to, I guess I probably could sell my- ps4s and have someone come and collect it if they lived within a five kilometer bubble from my house or something i don't know like hmm. i don't have to yeah. sanitize it yeah well yeah so this is just a hell of a lot easier and i'm not like very keen on the idea of having to go into an eb games in victoria at launch but for like half the price of the damn console i will see you there with a mask on and my deter- my detergent my hand sanitizer and as far back away from everybody as i can possibly be Mm. And hopefully they are very responsible about how they are going to do this. And you'd assume so by now, but I think that'll be fine. Uh, Just taking a trade like the weekend before, it would be very stupid to trade in on the launch day. I think trying. Are you allowed to do that? I guess you are. You can trade in. Because you'll put it against your yeah. Because as long as you have order, yeah. Smart Ben. Going that weekend before, then you can just walk straight out. Yeah. That's actually the smartest thing. You, that's not the smartest thing you've ever said. That's horrible. Yeah. That was like so patronizing. <laughs> that's the smartest thing you've said in the last 10 seconds. That's the best thing you brought to this show in 161 <laughs> episodes. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, uh, thank God you're finally of some value, Ben. Jeez. Besides Sorry. all this old stuff, there were some new games today. So there are a couple that we didn't know about before. The biggest one, probably God of War Ragnarok, is a 2021 game. So it's only pretty much a focusing on games out in the next 12 months. Uh, This one is far away from launch. It's the only one which they didn't kind of say, is this going to be a PS4 and PS5 or is it just PS5? That's our hope. Um, But with how they're speaking today, they kind of said we're going to support PS4 for three to four more years because we have so many players there, but not for every game. So it's one of those things we don't really know. But the trailer looked pretty cool. We didn't really see a lot of it. All we know is it's more God of War and that's what people want. So uh, that's probably the most exciting game that's in the launch 12 months, I would say, by now. Oh, for sure. And like, if you've played the first one, you know how the second one or the, how it ends really kind of on a cliffhanger with, well, not a cliffhanger, but at least it like teases what's to come. So mm-hmm. that's really exciting. Um, and looking at games like Spider-Man Horizon, you know, they're tentpole games. So is God of War, like the Forza Motorsport, you know, that we sort of just saw a logo for, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was at least planned for Xbox one, wrong console, PS4. Um, and then maybe just kind of that mood over gets like t- taken away when people don't care anymore. Um, yeah, but we don't know much about it. So there you go. No, um, we also saw Hogwarts Legacy, which has been rumored for ages. Harry um, Potter RPG now has a name. It. Pretty much. It looked pretty cool. Um, so this was one of the only games today, which is multi-platform. So they came out later and tweeted to say, by the way, this is on Xbox, but they got the console names wrong. I don't know if you saw that. They said- yeah, I did. This is on the Xbox One family, including Series X and Xbox One X. No, Xbox One is not part of the series. Like they're different generations. So whoever's managing that account just needs a bit of a refresher on the console names. But the point of that is that it's, it's multi-platform. Even though Sony never tell you that, they always very much, you know, this is our game. Um, and it's, of course, cross-gen. So that was the flavor of today. Um, we didn't really see gameplay. <laughs> we just saw some... Amazon's- it looked kind of old, this one. Amazon's just sold out of PlayStation 5, just by the okay. way. <laughs> so uh, we're not going to go back and edit that out. But <laughs> do it, it live, except we're recording it. Um, All right, so yeah. they sold out. Well, we can say exactly when they sold out. They sold out at about 2.10 um, p.m. Same something day. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would be more excited for Hogwarts Legacy if all the stuff with J.K. Rowling wasn't happening. Mm. Um, and I was kind of hoping in like anything Warner Brothers released, they'd maybe do something to kind of distance it but they didn't but i guess they've got time until release so something that i was super excited for 
I've become a little less excited for as a result. Well, of what just... could they do really? Like the people working on this game have nothing to do with JK Rowling. Like they're just making, they're doing their job. So yeah. Well, I don't know. I just, them. that's yeah. I'm not blaming them, but I think they're going to have to address it in some way before launch, probably even if they don't really want to, or like should really have to. I think people are, it's from what I've seen people, including me are kind of like demanding it. Like what, uh, do something about it. So we'll see. They should um, probably just say JK had nothing to do with this ever since she tweeted saying that magicians don't have toilets. They just magic it away and go wherever. That's when she lost the plot and <laughs> stop speaking now, JK, you're ruining everything. I forgot about that. That's gross. Uh, that downfall. Mm. Final fantasy 16 mm. PS exclusive. Uh, yeah. Also on PC. So no, they came out later and said it's not on PC. Oh, God, really? Oh, yeah, I thought... Came oh. Out, like, so in the trailer, it said PC and uh, at Did least they do games... that for Demon's Souls and for Final Fantasy 16? Oh, maybe I'm mixing them up. Maybe... I know that they, they did that for, for Demon's Souls for sure. Okay, so maybe that's the mm. one. Maybe I mixed them up. Maybe it's not Final Fantasy. Don't take that as a fact. Wait, I've got a press release. Vamp, and I'll go look at the press release and I'll tell uh, you. Yeah, I probably mixed them up. They wouldn't have stuffed up too. But that is what they did for Demon's Souls. They put the wrong platform on the end. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 doesn't excite me that much. But um, the press release just says PS5. So maybe it happened to both of them. Hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll confirm later on. Who knows? We I won't just, have that live. Yeah, no, that's not happening. This We'll talk about it next time. That's weird. Sorry to but, cut you off. But it says PS5, not PS4. So... We have no idea really what platforms are on because they kind of made it sound like it's a PlayStation exclusive. They didn't say which number. Well, yeah, if it was a PS5 exclusive, they'd just say PS5 exclusive, wouldn't they? So a PlayStation the console like... execution. Yeah, I don't know. This, see, this is, I love generation changes. It's just super not confusing whatsoever. Well, this one's very confusing, but it's exciting, Steve. Lots of things are going on. Yeah, so well, this I one looks like, like The Witcher I... and they have English accents and it's at least on PS5. And maybe yeah. on other things. Definitely not cool. Xbox. It looks pretty <laughs> cool. Um, what I would like to know is how does backwards compatibility work? Because they mentioned in a few interviews, you can pretty much play any PS4 game, but then they never announced it. They just kind of like, they said, yeah, we'll tell you more about that later. They haven't really. They've kind of suggested that you can play everything. But the fact that they haven't said that, you know, they had that guy before who said, we've tested a hundred games and they'll work. Is that all we get at launch? Uh, the reason I want to know is because can I get rid of my PS4? There's only a couple of games I haven't played on it, but I want to know that I can play them. Mm. They just they just need to make it clear exactly what can happen. Yeah. Um, and instead of doing any back compat stuff, they said that you get free PS4 games with the PS Plus collection and yeah. any of the PS4, PS5 games like Spider-Man Horizon Forbidden West, they'll give you a free upgrade path. So if you put in a disc into your disc-based console, it'll automatically give you the new version and digital entitlements will do the same. Does it go the other way though? If I buy the PS5 version of Spider-Man and I keep my PS4 and I want to play on that, can I use that on PS4? I'm going to say no, but I don't actually have the answer. Yeah. So I know that, I mean, Microsoft's term smart delivery is just a, a marketing buzz for it recognizes the game ID and it picks, you know, version one, two or three based on what, hardware you're on uh but it makes it very clear they've made it pretty clear that you buy the game and we'll figure out which version to give you it doesn't matter what you're playing on yeah i'm very confused by sony uh me as well and we don't have any less confusion we probably have a little bit more confusion actually today which is great but that's fine mm. uh and so this probably leaves us in a where do we think we stand versus the xbox so they've gone with very different approaches to pre-ordering uh, PS5 basically generated buzz and forced you to make a quick decision. Like I was on the fence about digital or disc. I know you went digital, I went disc. Uh, I only had like half an hour to decide and good thing I didn't wait any longer because I wouldn't have got one. Yeah. Ultimately, I saw that uh, post that you did about games being 125 and that's what pushed me to think long-term, I'll get the disc version. If that wasn't the case, I think I would have gone digital, but I did feel like I was being pushed to make a decision immediately when I wasn't really ready for it. Yeah. Um, and I didn't have time to really compare the prices. The only reason I did it is because we have two people in this house and we both play games. And generally, if I'm playing something upstairs, my husband will look at it and go, ooh, what's that? And want to play it. So having one disc for mm. two consoles doesn't work. So. so that's when it becomes more expensive. So you yeah. may as well get the digital version. 
Um, yeah. But that's the only, that's like that's the only thing that held me back. If I was bu- if I was one person and I was going between two consoles, I would absolutely have bought the disc ones and put it in two places and taken one disc between two consoles and not have been over, not have been concerned about it because mm. in the long run it'll be so much cheaper. And that's what people say anyway. Like even with the current console generation, like it, yeah, you got to deal with discs. Yeah, you got to go into shops. But like when you're done with the game, you can you get it in it. you can swap it with a friend it's like you own it it's not like you have the digital license forever tied around your neck yeah um so i don't know if a lot of consumers or like casual consumers quite understand that and you brought that up with like the series s last time we spoke and obviously it's a huge consideration with the ps5 digital so i guess people are going to learn those lessons pretty quickly and rather mm hard (laughs) i think this is a bit clearer than the s versus the x that one of them doesn't have a disc drive because that's the only difference and when they walk into a store and they say why is this one 750 and this one 600 it's a clear answer the s versus x is a bit different um and i think there's less chance that you're going to get that parent not understanding you can't buy a disc for this but that doesn't solve the grandparent arty uncle brother sister buying a game for someone who is not fully clued in they're going to say oh you know John got a new PlayStation for Christmas. I'm going to buy him a PlayStation game. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's something which we haven't really encountered before. The Xbox SAD didn't do very well, I don't think. So they got rid of that pretty much straight away. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting for those really unclued in consumers. What are they going to do? Unless they start selling tokens for games. Like they're briefly, you could buy like Forza Horizon 3 as a download token from JB Hi-Fi. That didn't really catch on. GameStop's going to have to do GameStop. GameStop or EB is going to have to do something like that because literally they're probably losing half of their sales with these pre-orders this, these next couple of weeks because people Mm. are buying digital editions of consoles that EB will never be able to sell you a game for unless they try to sell you gift cards. But yeah, well, I, I don't, they're going to have to do that and they're going to have to probably price them slightly cheaper than the digital store. AB's model is full price until you ask us for a discount. They might have to put them slightly cheaper. Um, but cheaper gonna, discs doesn't mean a thing to someone who doesn't have a disc drive in their console. <laughs> no, I mean, sell the, sell the download token cheaper. Like that would oh, be, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I, if I, you I, could buy a new release $10 cheaper, still get the digital benefit. That's a reason to physically walk into EB and buy a token. Oh, hell yeah. Otherwise, why would you do it? If it's, uh, if it's like 20 or 20 if it's like 15 or 20 bucks, which it might yeah. be, who knows? Yeah, I would definitely do that. Uh, Amazon, I don't think they're selling the digital version. I think they've just had the disc one, unless I just didn't see it. I think they... No, no, they had... Uh, oh, no, they wait, they didn't. Both. Did they have both? God. Um, I didn't see it. I can't but, remember. It's it's only been like two hours, Ben. Jeez. It was, um, well, it wouldn't surprise me if a retailer like that, they want to sell you disc for the long haul. So they just said, no, we're not going to bother selling that one. No, you're right. I could only find an optical disc drive one as well. Same mm-hmm. for the games, man. Um, which brings up what are they going to do with the Series S because are they going to say well that doesn't have a disc drive either we're not interested in selling it it doesn't serve our long term business model I think because it's such a different price point that they'll have to sell it but yeah like same, the same problem comes up immediately Possibly. afterwards um, mm. I don't know if I made this up or if it was actually something that was being discussed like around the time the Xbox One was about to launch and there were rumors it was completely digital and there was this big like argument over digital yeah. licensing and entitlements and when Don Matrix really sort of annoyed everyone. Was there like yes. talk of a scheme where you could sell your games back? There was or the entitlement know. back, the license back, you know what I mean? There was talk, I don't think it was announced, it was rumored that there would be a way that you could like loan someone your digital game. Mm. I don't know about selling it back, but there was certainly there was talk about that digital license, which effectively you buy it now and it's just on your console. It's on your account. Uh, and then that's it. There's nothing you can do with it. There was talk of being able to like loan it to someone um, because they wanted you to buy from the store. They wanted to get rid of discs, but they were probably five years ahead of their time, maybe even more based on how people are acting at the moment. So yeah, things could have been better, but we all kind of said, to be fair, Microsoft marketed it terribly. And yeah. we said, this is a terrible console because the trade-off was you always have to be online because we need to know that you're, you're you and you, we can validate your license all the time. Uh, but now that's pretty standard. Like everything I have is online. My, you know, everything I have. So yeah. it's not, yeah, it would work now, but they just are not bothering with that because it didn't, it didn't work last time. Well, as much, as much as I think there's obvious impacts for the physical brick and mortar stores, I think we're going to start seeing 
change in that digital licensing space because you'll have to. And and some of the, the reason that you'll have to think about that, Sony and Microsoft and other publishers, is that these consoles don't have very large hard drives internally anyway. Um, mm. What, like 512 and a gig? Um, 512, one terabyte, the other two Xbox One. Oh, sorry, gig, eight, sorry. 825 for PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. Almost a terabyte and half a terabyte, basically. Um, yeah. With the Xbox has confirmed those one terabyte little expansion cards that are proprietary from Seagate that we don't know the price of. No, and they're very expensive. Sony will accept a very specific model of external USB 3 drive, but I forget all of the letters that it has to comply with. It's like some, a... Some two- certain letters, they're not really on the market yet, is my yeah. understanding. So it's more next year. And they... Um, I think they actually plug into an expansion port. They don't plug into the USB port. Ah, well, there you go. My anyway, guess. they're all going to be very expensive. So like people will mm. have not a lot of space. And if you're finished with a game, you almost want to not just delete it, but like say, I'm, I've deleted this. I don't want it anymore. Can I have some money back Microsoft or from Sony? Because you can have it back. I don't want to play it anymore. And it then I'll use be. that money and buy another game. I promise. Like at the moment, you can down, you can delete parts of some games, like the extremely bloated Modern Warfare. It's like 160 gig or something, but you can delete like Spec Ops, which is a failed mode. You can delete the campaign when you're done. You can get it down to a reasonable size. Uh, that was another thing developers were saying. They were saying at the moment, hard drives are so slow that they have to basically cheat and put assets on there several times so that you can load it quick enough. On an SSD, they won't need to do that. So game sizes should come way down. Um, but that's probably not going to happen at the very start of the generation. No. I think what we're going to need is how great would it be if you had a disc console, if you could say, keep the patch on the console, anything that's updated, keep that. But the main base game, which is on the disc, delete, because I want to just reinstall that when I need it. Uh, that would save some space. One thing mm. which it, certainly Xbox can do, and I think PlayStation as well, is you can use any USB hard drive to play last gen games. Old ones. And, and you can store new games on there. So you can move a Series X game on, and I think you can move a PS5 game onto it. And then when you want to play it, you transfer it back to the SSD so you don't have to re-download it. That's a, a launch solution while we can't afford that expansion or we're waiting for it in the, play, in the case of uh, PlayStation. Uh, not ideal, but it is a solution um, that we can probably afford. I would say almost everyone has an old expansion hard drive lying around. So better than nothing, not ideal. It's going to be a bit clunky, but there is a way around it that's not going to cost you hundreds of dollars. And you'll have a big hole in your wallet come november anyway so any money you can say it's probably worth it cool Mm -hmm. um so obviously we're both we're both getting an xbox and a ps5 it's not like one beats the other yeah we're both going both i think if we weren't in the position of occasionally writing the odd word about a game uh i wouldn't be getting both even today i considered not getting a ps5 but ultimately i want the best um version of these games that i can play I'm willing to pay for that, uh, but probably for the first year, you can get away with that with just having one of them. Like even yeah. if you keep your Xbox One or your PS4, you can play pretty much everything. Uh, you could just I could just play the best game, the multi-platform games on Xbox, and I could still play Spider-Man and Horizon. Um, that's not what I'm doing. I'm willing to shell out a ridiculous amount of money to get these consoles, but they're cheaper than I thought they'd be. I didn't think they were going to be 750. I thought they were going to be more like 900. So. It's not too bad. I would recommend just, I think someone said in our internal chat the other day, which one do you think I should go with? And the answer is just pick the one that you like best. Like they're much, for, yeah. much the you, same at the moment. There's do you have more trophies or achievements? Go that That's way. It. Which controller um, do you like better? Do you reckon that the price of these consoles was today the same mm. price that maybe was earmarked for the consoles last week or the week before that? I certainly think that the disc version was. I think Sony had made the mistake of going 600 for the PS3 all those years ago, which was 1,000 in Australia at the time, and that just killed them like mm. the years at the start of that generation. I think, uh, as I said before, like $100 in the US seems to be a lot more than it would be here to add on to a price mentally. So people kind of had that, like the, this generation of consoles already cost four ninety nine, so that's what they're willing to pay. The PS4 launched at three ninety nine, but went up with the Pro. Um, I think they knew that, that once you start putting it up to 600 that's just too much for Americans. Now, the, the 
disc free one, I'm not sure that they were always planning that. I think they saw an opportunity to go in the middle of the S and the X for Xbox. And they, you know, Xbox has great marketing where they can say we've got the most powerful and we've got the most affordable. What could Sony do to counter that? They could say we've got the best games. We match the price on their disc version. And they can say we've got the most powerful console for the most affordable price. They can kind of get away with something like that. Yeah, we can do 4K. This one can't. We can. It's cheap. Exactly. So yeah. I think they saw that as a, that's the ideal price point. Maybe they were thinking 50 bucks more. Before yeah, Xbox I reckon announced. they brought that one down a little bit. I think, mm-hmm. I think you're right on both counts. Yeah, but they're set now. We're ready to go. What do you think about them launching so close together? They're only two days apart. Potentially logistical for uh, retailers. They're going to have to have stock for the Xbox ready to go. It's all going to probably be pre-sold. So you're not going to be able to walk in and buy one. They're all going to be allocated. But like EB Games normally has pretty small storage rooms in their original stores. Uh, they're probably going to have to have all the stock in there like the week before though. Yeah. So what are you planning a heist? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> not planning a heist. I'm just saying, <laughs> would you be annoyed if you're a retailer? <laughs> um, oh yeah. But I think they have a lot more to be annoyed about than just this. I think it's just That's added true. onto their list of problems right now. Yeah. Well, they didn't even know they were selling a console this morning by the sounds of things. They kind of guessed yesterday that it might be happening. Yeah. Well, it's, it'll bring a, a good influx of cash into their systems, which they probably need at this point. So that's mm. good at least. Um, and a lot of really hair pulling, stressful days. Well, it's going to be a fun week. The advantage of it being the same week is if you've got some annual leave to use, you can just use up like four days and cover both console launches. You have to because like in addition to these console launches, it's just like every game ever comes out in like late October, early November. So I don't That's know it. what we're going to do. We'll have to figure that out later. No, we've got that figured out. No problem. Yeah, sure. Easy. Done. What else? Uh, well, I, th- I think that covers <laughs> us with PlayStation. We've touched on, on Xbox a little bit. Nintendo is actually doing something this week as well. They're releasing a bunch of old games. Yes. Uh, what you've been playing, Super hmm. Mario 3D All-Stars, which includes Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy in HD. But as we've recently learned, they're all emulated. So minimal changes to these games. Uh, tell me about it. I, I can't get it until tomorrow, I think, it's out. Um, I'm excited yeah, to play it. They're all very good games, but I've, I've set my expectations low. I know it's a pretty sloppy effort, but they're still good games, right? So they're still fun to play. Well, yes. Um, 64 is gross. It looks gross. It's in 720 no matter how you play. The controls are crap. I don't like it. But I never owned an N64. I used to play Mario 64 in like the first, probably the same 10 minutes over and over and over at my cousin's house. So I have zero attachment to that game. I like, mm. I played it on the DS. I like the DS version. Not so much for like the playing as Yoshi and stuff as like the mini games and stuff. Anyway, um, Matt husband had an N64 knows that game back to front and he, that's what he's been playing. So I think my equivalent to that is galaxy, which I absolutely adore. I know it's no galaxy Two Ben. Um, but you can see from, it's, it's, it's the evolution of 3D Mario games. So the 64 one's the grossest looking at controls, the worst. And then Sunshine's a little bit better in both controls and camera. And then Galaxy is like the pinnacle. Um, so I tend to go to the Galaxy game and play a lot of Galaxy. Uh, and Sunshine is probably your go-to, maybe. I don't know if I'm putting words in your mouth. Um, mm, no, it'd be Galaxy. Galaxy, be Galaxy is the too. best by far. I do want to play Sunshine because having, uh, I mean, I could go play all three of these games right now on their original platform. Yeah. Um, well, you're sort of doing that anyway, just on the <laughs> Switch. <laughs> no, but you, you're playing them in HD, uh, <laughs> which to be fair, if you go back and try to play, I tried to play some 64 on um, Virtual Console a couple of weeks ago just to compare Yeah. The anticipation of this. It's unplayable because it's like in 480p, which is, uh, it's still yeah. high resolution. The N64 version was 240p. Like Nintendo actually improved it a lot for the Virtual Console. But yeah. It's still blurry as hell. So at least they've got it crisp to a degree. Yeah, but like crisp also just means like super jagged looking at the same time. Like it looks mm. muddy and jaggy at the same time just because it's so old. Um, it's like they're old. all really good. They're like you remember them. You know, I, I think people will probably end up playing Galaxy more often than any of the other ones unless you have like a really big emotional connection to the other ones. But and I think I was reading a couple of reviews this morning. Everyone's kind of come to the same conclusion like, yeah, it's good. But like Tony Hawk's just came out and Crash just came out. And I'm like really for 
remade games that keep that aesthetic and they keep the the core of the game but they give you some modern sensibility so you're not like sunshine i kept wanting to throw my switch across the room because if you get in like a weird area where there's walls kind of too close together like you just the camera just goes i i i don't know what to do you're on your own for a minute until you try to figure out how to get out of this i'm like okay this is i don't want this camera is the biggest problem of all of these games except for maybe galaxy uh i'm disappointed to hear it doesn't sound like they did anything to those so there's some, 64 still have the weird like it was made for the c buttons not for a stick where yeah. you just kind of press it and it just kind of pans one way a little bit you can't you don't have full movement of it so that's Same shitty thing. that's an obvious thing to fix and your brain is so used now to using that right stick to try to like fix the camera and it does it just doesn't no nah, it's not gonna yeah. it's not gonna do it so you have to try to like like you do for Nintendo games anyway, like retrain your muscle memory to hit the A, B buttons in the A, B order. And then you go to Xbox and you keep like backing out of menus by accident. Same idea with the camera, but it's good. Like it's not bad. I think everybody kind of gave it like that eight, 8.5 kind of level of like, yeah, it's a bit happy sloppy, birthday but... Mario. Mm. But yeah. I think, yeah, I, I can deal without the remaster. Just go in the, here's just an up version. If they had done that small quality of play modernizing, which is, making the cameras modern. Um, Cause I, I remember playing Mario 64 and you have to jump blind quite often because the camera just can't show you where you want to go, which yeah. that was fine in 96. That's how we played games back then. It was amazing that we even had a 3d game, but it's we've moved so far beyond that. I think the rest of it holds up. Okay though. Same in sunshine, um, which I believe. So they use both triggers to use the flood mechanic, right? Because it used to have on GameCube, you had your, single trigger but you could apply a different amount of pressure so oh is that how it works so one's to run and one's to just stand and shoot okay um yeah i mean so that's i can't remember playing sunshine to be honest before now um it's 70 bucks i think the thing that's really catching people off guard now that we know it's emulators is so this kind of proves that we could have emulators on the switch Mm. so virtual consoles well, as, we already as we're kind of used to having for NES and SNES online. And it's pretty obvious that N64 will come at some point and they've got an emulator, which can, if they've got an emulator, which can just output these games at 720, that'll be a massive improvement on what they would look like. Otherwise, why is that not out? And I wouldn't have thought that this switch would be powerful enough to do GameCube or Wii emulated well, but it seems like it can. Yeah. So we could have at least some of those games in, which have never been re-released in virtual console. Um, but instead they're just giving us a collection of games and a game and watch mini. Like, what are they doing with like switch online is not worth 30 bucks at the moment. Yeah. Well, Uh, you get, you get super Mario all-stars on switch online right now, which in my mind is a better compilation than 3d all-stars because the 3d games, 3d games uh, 20 years ago were garbage. Like even if it's Mario caliber quality, like 3d games were garbage. They had just been kind of like started to be conceived and like, we've improved quite considerably up till now, obviously, but like mm. Mario one, two, and three were side scrollers. Like they're timeless and you could go back and play those. And it, there's like, you, you don't want to kill yourself and get frustrated with the camera. Not that you want, you know what I mean? And the 3d ones, you can't say this. You can't say it for those. They're not, they're not timeless. Well, I would say that that of that early 64 PlayStation era, Mario 64 is probably one of the only games which is still playable today. Like go and try to play GoldenEye. It's un- like the frame rate comes oh, down yeah. to about six. Like yeah. it's unplayable. Mario, at least it still plays. It feels old. It feels like it's 25 years old, which it is. But you can still play it. You can still enjoy it. I think the thing which everyone mentioned is it's a 70 bucks. There's been almost nothing done to these games, but they look better on my TV. If they just included Galaxy 2 and rounded out the four pack, you're paying you know 20 bucks a game, not even that yeah. would be fine. But just having that three games only just makes it feel like it's lacking and maybe slightly overpriced when it was so easy for them to have just said, this is a pretty good deal. And they, they just had to Nintendo it for lack of better word. And get rid of the garbage Disney vault thing. Like just make it purchasable until mm. it's not. Not until the end of March, 2021, where it goes back away and you can't get it. So if you didn't get it, you missed out. Like we don't need this like weird inflated sense of FOMO on top of this. But anyway. Yeah. That didn't sell out at EB games within two hours though. So obviously <laughs> they have some stock. You should be able to get one. There you go. And I'm sure 
if it goes really, really well, when the 4K Switch comes out, just like games are on PS4 and PS5, you'll be able to get this on Switch and Switch 4K or whatever it's going to be called. Mm. So there you go. Well, I think that pretty much does us for this episode. When we come back in about a fortnight, hopefully we'll have pre-ordered an Xbox Series X and we don't miss the 8 a.m. start or deadline or cutoff or what happens. Maybe yeah. they'll still be available. Maybe it'll be really slow. Uh, I doubt that, though. I think they're going to be gone. I, I think, think you should so get too. in on that. If you've missed the PlayStation, maybe consider an Xbox because we have no idea when they're going to come in stock again. Exactly. And I think you'll hmm. be able to tell us about Mafia by then. Hopefully, all things go well. Hopefully, yes. So Which look forward out to that. This month of a enhanced port, a remaster in Tony Hawk, and the remake <laughs> of Mafia. Hopefully, I'll get a new game next month. As Mario would say, wahoo! Um, oh, have you been? Have you been watching? Have you watched the um, Netflix documentary High Score? I've watched the first two episodes. It's super uh, good. I do I like think. Charles Martinet's soothing tones as the narrator. It's yeah, it's cool. It's good. It's interesting. Man, I can't remember how many years ago, but I met him at the bar mm. at E3, and we just I've kept met him running at a bar into, at E3, and we just kept running into each other like every night. And he's just like the nicest dude. So it's just. I've been watching it as I fall asleep because Matt's on night. So I just take the, the Surface tablet to bed with me and I just go to bed with Charles, basically. That's a nice way Very to end relaxing. on Mario's yeah. 30, not 65th, 35th <laughs> anniversary is the voice of Mario is a very nice guy. So that's probably the nicest thing we can say about Mario. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm S right AU on internet things and it's divided. Uh, obviously. And Ben underscore Salter on Twitter. Come hang out. Bye. Yeah, that's us.